I think it's natural to start discussing or mentioning this uh, conjecture uh, made by uh, Bovila in a paper for, I don't remember the year. Do, do you remember when the, it's around 2000, right? No, 1990 perhaps? Or 2000. Something like that. 2000. What do you, what do you yeah. say? 2000. 2000? Okay. Yes. Then, a a oh, yeah, in 2000. Yeah, you worked on it, so okay. <laughs> Fine. So it predicts that uh, uh, splitting of the tangent bundle in involutive subsheet or sub bundles uh, induces a product decomposition on uh, the universal covering of a compact complex scalar or compact scalar manifold. So this, of course, is very relevant to the whole discussion of varieties with a trivial canonical class, because as we learned from the talks, the first step of the history is producing an infinitesimal split splitting and the composition of the tangent bundle. And there has been a lot of work on the subject. While preparing the slides, I found rather interesting that uh, most of the people involved in the proof of this uh, decomposition theorem uh, somehow worked on this problem, right? So this paper was published, the original paper was published in proceedings of, uh, or in a volume in memory of Michael Schneider, which had uh, Peternell, which had Thomas Peternell as one of the editors. And there were contributions on the subject uh, by, of course, uh, Beauville, and then also by Stefan Druel, by Andreas, I didn't manage to put here also, uh, the, there was also contributions by Campana Peternel. And uh, yeah, I think this is kind of natural and kind of interesting to, to note that we, we had this, uh, that this contribution from all these guys that end up working toward the, 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 the composition theorem for singular varieties. So do any, any of you want to comment something on this uh, on this problem, or suggest particular case which might be relevant? In the in the in some slides uh, slides ahead, we are going to discuss a singular version proposed by Stefan in one of his talks, by Duell in one of his talks. But I think already the this non-singular case, the smooth case, is rather interesting and. A nice problem. Any comments on that? Uh, yeah, maybe I have a small comment. So, uh, so there is this paper by Campana and Peternel on on this topic, uh, where they deal with some three-dimensional cases, and uh, well, which of course now is you know included in your paper with Brunella and Trizé. Um But so for. Uh, three-dimensional projective manifolds, uh, which are of general type, uh, what they do is that, well, you go to a minimal model, no problem there, and then they go to a canonical model, and somehow they, they analyze the singularities to show that it's only uh, quotient singularities, you know, some, so that they get some obifold structure, and then they want to apply uh, something like, um, uh, Aubin Yao theorem in an orbifold setting. And so they write that it's a standard, standard adaptation of the smooth case. And I was wondering, so now with the progress that we, that, that has appeared in the last uh, years on these uh, metrics and singular settings, uh, is this clear that is, this is actually no problem to do uh, uh, this for uh, in, in an orbifold setting, so for uh, canonically polarized varieties. So maybe Henri has some thoughts on this. Uh, what I can say is for sure, uh, everything that was done by Yao Oban Yao before them uh, passes to the orbifold setting. Um, it's not necessarily like entirely obvious, but. Uh, um, it's it's more or less um, a consequence of the methods already. So yes, it is pretty standard by now. Okay. And does this involve any of the, the newer results uh, 
that's been produced in the last years? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. So they, they were right, actually. Mm. Okay. So any other comment on this uh, problems or? If not, let's move on. So another natural problem which appears in the the whole history is the question about fundamental groups, or even in the smooth case, I think that uh, while preparing these slides, uh, I stretched one of the questions which appeared in Daniel's talk, but uh, I think motivated by that, or I know we remember some, some problem that he worked some time ago, and uh, even in the smooth case, we are not completely we don't know everything about the fundamental groups of compact carrier manifolds with trivial canonical class. And I guess that the question is that uh, does there exist a compact carrier manifold with trivial canonical class, strongly stable tangent bundle, and fundamental group isomorphic to a finite non solvable or better simple group? I think the first example of uh, a manifold like that, of a Calabial or threefold like that, with non abelian fundamental group appeared in a, in a paper by. By Arnaud. There was some progress on that, but I guess that all the examples we have today are solvable and solvable for the fundamental group. I have uh, no comment on this. Yeah, maybe, maybe I should make some comments. Uh, first of all, uh, we need. Uh, uh, odd dimensional variety because uh, we need k of O zero. Otherwise, I mean, it's uh, it's entirely trivial. But even for threefold, I mean, uh, the physicists have this long list of, uh, of threefold that they've computed. Uh, group, and it's always uh, sort of, first of all, very small and it's always solvable. I mean, it's always extension of. Uh, of a million groups. So, I mean, the typical, the first case would be to take A5, I mean, the group of computation, uh, and uh, I mean, can this uh, act uh, freely and uh, I mean, can it be your manifold? And I guess it should, but uh, maybe you have to go to higher dimension in examples. You say that in the even dimensional case is trivial, even if we keep this strongly stable assumption, is it trivial to produce uh, simple groups or non solvable groups? Uh, I'm not sure what is strongly stable, but uh, it's, I mean, if you look for reducible, uh, yeah, I mean, in even dimension, the like, k of O is done zero, right? So, uh, this is uh, gives very strong limitation on the, on the possibilities. So uh, the examples should be odd dimensional. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just uh, maybe just a curiosity. Uh, I don't know if anyone has uh, ideas. Anyone want to comment on that? Okay, so uh, the uh, the problem I extract from appeared in the in the end of uh, Daniel's uh, lecture. So it's about the fundamental group of singular analogs of Calabial varieties, and uh, we know that the singular the fundamental group is is for even dimensional Calabial is finite, or even the tall fundamental group of the regular part. Finite, and uh, the question is about the audio dimensional cases. I leave the Daniel comment on this. Yeah, so actually. Uh, in the even dimensional case, the, you can prove the fundamental group is actually uh, trivial using uh, an argument with the holomorphic Euler characteristic. Um, so but the interesting thing is the odd dimensional case, and let me just, I, I said this in the lectures, but the, the, the problem is that this relies on the method of Campana, 
um, in this paper uh, positivity of cotangent bundles and uh, um, fun, a fundamental group. This is a journal of algebraic geometry 95, um, where he uses uh, Shafarevich maps and this Gromov method um, for, to, to prove uh, that if your chi of Ox is non-zero and a certain condition on this uh, invariant, which is called kappa plus, is fulfilled, which is always fulfilled in our case, uh, then the fundamental group is finite and there even is an estimate uh, in terms of the the chi one, uh, the, the chi of Ox. So the, the the size of the fundamental group is less than or equal to 2 to the n minus 1 divided by the uh, norm of the holomorphic Euler characteristic. And so in the odd dimensional case, Calabiao by definition chi is 0, so I mean it's about, there is some multiplicativity argument uh, where this chi uh, non-zero comes in. So, okay, we, we have, I have I think I, we have no methods. I, I have no idea about the method. Um, and this goes back also to my comment in the talk about gromoll chiga which somehow if you look at uh, the smooth case, it's, it's really at the beginning of the theory. You somehow already, you know, right from the start, if you exclude the flag factor, that the fundamental group is finite. And, and from there, it's, it's much, much easier. And, but if you look at gromoll chiga and you think about singular metrics um, and try to uh, analyze whether you can extend something, um, this gromoll chiga really is a statement about very precise geodesic geometry on the universal cover. Growth of geodesic balls and, 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 and so very classical Riemannian geometry. And uh, I think we don't have enough control over the singular Keller-Einstein metrics that exist to, to try to execute any of this in the singular case because it's just too fine. It's just really geodesics and if your geodesic starts or walks into the singularity or something, there is no hope. So I, I just want to say I, I, don't, I have no methods. Any suggestion would be welcome. <laughs> Any comments or suggestions for Daniel? Okay, let's uh, move on. Thank you, Daniel. And uh, the, the next problem is also related to this. Oh, sorry. It's also related to uh, the fundamental group or actions or fundamental group of finite groups on abelian varieties. And uh, it was proposed to us this morning by, by Katja and uh, asks about uh, the betting numbers or second betting numbers of smooth fetal torus quotients. Do you want to comment a bit on the question, uh, Katja? Uh, so it's just that uh, uh, after having listened to the talk by Daniel, uh, he mentioned uh, in his talk the paper by Martin Schwald, uh, and then I uh, had a look at this paper and I was uh, like uh, glad to um, find back uh, these torus quotients uh, because we um, sort of worked with them like uh, more than 20 years ago for, uh, well, uh, for the following purpose. Uh, we had a theorem about boundedness of uh, families of morphisms between uh, yeah, three folds with second betty number equal to one. I mean, it's slightly stronger than Picard equal to Z. Originally, our assumption was Picard equal to Z, but uh, certain things we, uh, for certain things, we need a, st a stronger hypothesis that uh, the second betty number is equal to one. Uh, and uh, then our major concern was uh, Fano varieties, where it is, of course, uh, equivalent, uh, but um, uh, then uh, for Calabiao, so there is a difference, and uh, so uh, finally, uh, somehow, um, the case we had to exclude to handle the Calabiaos uh, was, uh, well, exactly this case of tor torus quotients, because if you have a quotient of a torus by a finite group, you, you know that the degree of a map uh, onto this variety cannot be bounded because it has endomorphisms. Uh, so we conjectured, it just did not exist, uh, and the conjecture is true in dimension up to three. 
uh, and uh, then uh, we sort of thought it was true in general, but uh, uh, I think there was no uh, progress since then. So I was like pleased to see that some people were studying those questions. Uh, there is uh, this guy Andreas Demleitner uh, and then uh, Martin Schweid also. So I thought maybe if some people are interested in that, maybe they could have a look at this. <laughs> uh, that's what I... Uh, so let's... Uh, anyone want to comment on this question by by Amerik? Uh, yes, just uh, a small remark. Uh, when you said up to three, I guess this includes three, but I, I think three is uh, it's treated in a recent paper, right? And maybe it's three or four years ago. Where he completely classified actually finite groups acting freely in an uh, abelian three fold. And this <laughs> implies indeed that uh, there are no cases where the quotient has uh, B2 equals one. Yes, but, well, uh, we, did it to, we did it 20 years ago. Uh, you but, did it for, for three folds? Yes, sure. Uh, sorry, uh, sure. I sorry, uh, uh -huh. I thought it was open. No, 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 for three folds we uh, we did it, well, so it's proposition 3-1, which you can oh, see I on the slide. I, I believe you. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, that uh, quotient of a uh, three-dimensional abelian variety by a finite group and so on. Um, uh, so, you, you say who, who yeah. could be classified? Uh, uh, you said uh, somebody completely classified the action, but I... Uh, could not hear the name. Uh, Oguizo. Oguizo, okay. Mm -hmm. Oguizo, that's about mm -hmm. four years ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, the next question is back to the problem of uh, relation between the product structure and the uh, infinitesimal product structure. And it's a conjecture posed by uh, Stefan in one of his talks. I think I will let him comment on it. Okay, yes, so, so, so this is a, a natural question. I mean, if you look at the, the, the proof of the BB decomposition theorem, I mean, in the end, uh, as soon as you have uh, proved the algebraic integrability of, of all the direct summons, you, you want to produce a splitting of the variety. And uh, in fact, this is exactly uh, what I proved. Uh, I mean, in the setting of the BB decomposition theorem, the, con the conjecture is known. And even you don't need uh, the, the birational map. So there is only a quasi tal cover that splits. And uh, the splitting is induced by the, the, the composition of the tangent shift. Uh, so I don't know if, in general, we need this, this birational map. Uh, what I can say, if you assume, for instance, that X is minimal, so this uh, the mild singularities and a canonical class NEF, then you can prove that assuming that the conjecture is true, you can re remove this parational map. So there is a quasi cover uh, uh, such that, uh, that that splits into a product of two varieties. But in general, like, I, don't, I don't know if I have to put the, the, the parational map or not. And uh, I think uh, one has also to assume some uh, to, to put some assumption on the singularities of the of the, the foliation E and G. I, mean, I suspect that the, the result does not hold in general. And uh, in fact, you, you cannot see this in the setting of the BP decomposition theorem, because of, as I explained in my talk, uh, as soon as E is a direct sum of T sub X, uh, this immediately implies that uh, um, the, the foliation is weakly regular. And I uh, said uh, that uh, in general, weak irregular does not imply anything on the singularities of the foliation. But if you assume that uh, the total space, uh, say, is KLT, and if you assume that the canonical class of the foliation is Cartier, then weak irregular implies uh, canonical singularities, say. And uh, this is exactly what happens in the case of the BP decomposition theorem. I mean, the, the, the canonical class of the foliations are zero. So in particular, they are Cartier. So automatically, all the foliations involved have mild singularities. And as I explained in my uh, in, in uh, the, the, the talk recorded last last week, as soon as you have a foliation with algebraic leaves and mild singularities, automatically it is given by a morphism. And this is the, the, the main point to prove this uh, this conjecture. So this is why I think we have to to, to put a, a, an assumption on the singularities of the of both foliations. But this is not a natural uh, statement. So I have no idea. Of, uh, I mean, 
I, I have some ideas to prove this, this conjecture in some particular cases, but in general, I have no ideas of what is going on in, in the story. That's it, I think. Yeah, w one thing that uh, I think already, even if we uh, are in a smooth projective manifold, projective yeah. manifold and uh, we have a, a splitting by uh, algebraically integrable subsheets, is it, is it clear that we have a product structure. I don't think so, right? Clear note. Uh, I think this is true. I mean, I, th I think I can prove the, the conjecture if X is KLT, and if you assume that both E and G are have canonical singularities. And as I said, if X is smooth, uh, regularity implies canonical singularities. Sure. So you remember in the talk I said that the, 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 the in fact, the projection is then given by a morphism, but more than that, you know that the, the fibers are irreducible. This is an important uh, point, and the, the lists are irreducible. This is the for regular projection. This is uh, this is obvious, but in a singular case, this is much more much more tricky. But I, I have the impression that I can prove this in a, in a smooth case. I'm, I'm not claiming that this is uh, easy, but uh, I think the, if you put all the arguments together, that I have in uh, two or three papers, it, 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 it could be enough. But I, I know I'm not meaning like I, like I can remove the barrage on the map, even in a smooth case. Yeah, and, and I think also that a related question still in the smooth case is that when we have a splitting on uh, of the tangent sheet, let's say in two summons in a simply connected manifold, then both should be algebraically integrable, I guess. But uh, yeah, this yeah, they offer different flavor, but uh, just simply connected. I think so. Yeah. I don't see any example of. Yeah. It's just seem to connect should be enough. But I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just a wide I, guess. I mean, if you believe in this Bobil conjecture, then somehow this is the special case. So if I believe in, if in you which simply con in, in this first conjecture right. which you mentioned, if if you believe in this conjecture, if you simply connect it, then already the manifold should split and. I sure. guess yeah, the foliation exactly, should yeah. correspond to the two factors, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. That's true, yeah. Sure. Uh, maybe I have, an, I have another comment since you, Stefan, since you said that maybe you have to put assumptions on the singularities of the foliations. So somehow, if, if the statement is true and in the end you are a product, the foliations yeah. will have nice singularities after these modifications. Do I understand yeah. this correctly? Yeah. yeah. Yes, if you have a product structure, uh, uh, I mean, the corresponding foliation is canonical if and only if the, the fiber is canonical. Mm -hmm. So if X is mildly singular at the beginning, uh, ex you excuse me, I just saw that uh, Adrian Langer uh, left a comment. So maybe yeah. you would like to comment his comment. The comment is yes, we can. Yes, we can. Now you put the comment uh, when when we were asking uh, is uh, if Arnaud. Uh, I mean, this is a question about Arnaud ten minutes ago. I think the comment was uh, was ah. for something completely different. Okay. Sorry. So I, I got lost. Sorry. What? So yes. somehow my question was, would you expect that if you start just with the assumption of your conjecture, then after quasi tal cover and by rational maps, singularities become canonical? Yes. Uh, no, it depends. I mean, the rational could uh, create uh, bad singularities. But uh, as I said, if you, uh, yeah, no, I don't know. But if it's only after a quasi tal cover, if you remove the barrational maps, you get something uh, non singular. I mean, with mild singularities. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other comment on this? Uh... Um, I may have a question for uh, uh, Stefan, just uh, to come back to something you said earlier, uh, saying that if, so about the, the conjecture, if X is minimal, then you don't need this birational map. Is there, um, is, is there, uh, is it something easy to see or is there a, 
simple rational behind it? Or? This is this is this is uh, the this is the MMP. I mean, I am assuming that the the singularities are mine, so say canonical, and uh, uh, this 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 is these are two meaning. In fact, you can see that Y and Z are general uh, fibers of the corresponding maps on uh, on X. Mm -hmm. So they have also canonical singularities, and uh, automatically they are uh, minimal. Okay. And then, uh, if you have two minimal models, this is given by a, a sequence of flops. And if you have a sequence of flops, then you can we can prove that you can uh, I mean you can you, you you can you can prove that x one in fact is indeed a spitz as well. I mean maybe it is not y by y and z, but if you apply flops to y and z, but in the end you can split uh, x one as well. Okay. So this is a, this, this lemma is contained in a, in a paper about uh, the BB decomposition conjecture. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this is this is due to the fact that you have the existence of the MMP. This is all the I'm using all the MMP at that time. Yes. Okay. Thanks. I get scared every time that I'm I hear that I'm using all the MMP. But anyway, let's move to the next question. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, something that. Uh, Myself and uh, and Tuzé wrote some time ago. Some time ago, that is, uh, it's about foliations with uh, strong tangent sheaf or strong tangent bound. We were thinking on the smooth case on non-unit ruled projective manifolds, and we uh, were wondering if uh, C one equals zero and C two different from zero. For a foliation with strong tangent bundle would imply algebraic integrability. So uh, this is, has been proved in some particular cases. So Stefan proved in rank two and three, right, Stefan? Yes. And uh, Andreas uh, and, and, and Thomas uh, proved uh, in any rank, but assuming uh, that the symmetric powers of PF and not only PF are stable. We don't know yet if this is, if the question is true in general or not. Uh, if you want to comment on it, have any ideas, the subject. Uh, so this is, this is one, another open problem. So let's move on. Uh, the yes, uh, I just oh, wanted sorry. to ask: uh, uh, Could this uh, be automatically true that all the symmetric powers are stable in this case, or uh, other counterexamples? I don't think there are counterexamples for tangent sheaves of foliation. There are counterexamples for vector bundles, but uh, yeah, it could be. Uh, it's not excluded. This possibility is not excluded. Mm -hmm. So you don't know an example when TF is uh, stable, uh, but uh, some symmetric powers are not stable. No, indeed, I think that the the argument of Stefan to deal with low rank is uh, goes in that way, it's showing that if some symmetric powers is not stable, then you produce a negative structure, and then using box connection and you, mm -hmm. you reach a contradiction. You end mm -hmm. up in that situation with zero. So it's it's conceivable, I think, that uh, in the case of a foliation, the stability of TF implies stability of symmetric powers. But mm -hmm. I, this is this is true. I mean, if 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 the foliate, if the conjecture is correct, but uh, this implies that all the powers are uh, all the symmetric powers are stable, because the the, the splitting theorem I gave in my talk. Says in particular that after a, a finite etal cover, uh, your X is a product. So your uh, your TF corresponds to a Calabria or a Pekela. And in this case, it is not that uh, symmetric powers are, are stable. So the conjecture. Uh, in which case it is known? Sorry? No, what, what it is known, if, if the conjecture holds, this automatically implies that all the, the, the symmetric powers of TF have to be uh, uh, stable. Mm -hmm. But you said uh, the stability of symmetric powers is known in some case, but I overheard the question. For, for Calabiao and Hyperkeller. Uh, Calabiao yeah. and Hyperkeller, this is known. Yeah. Uh -huh. you, you know by whom? 
this is a consequence of the computation of the holonomy. Mm -hmm. No? Ah, uh, okay, okay, sure. Mm -hmm. no, this, this is the, sure. uh, yeah. Okay, I see. Mm -hmm. uh, so, can I ask about this? Because uh, I understand that this uh, result of shepherd band that was used, it was something about rank two vector bundles, but, and uh, but if we have something that is stable, say, on a surface with C1 equal 0 and C2 non zero, then uh, all, uh, for almost every prime bar reduction is still stable, right? Mm -hmm. Is it related exactly to this result or? That's the question. Uh, uh, it, it, this, this is a final section in the paper. We actually have not used the Sheffer Barn results we mentioned here. This is, I don't know, it was kind of a wild guess. And I had the impression, we had the impression that when we wrote that, uh, the, 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 the things of the results of Schiffer Baron were related to it, but we don't, uh, we don't actually use that in any way in the paper, just as a, just a final section with a wild guess. So. So this result is certainly related to the computation exactly of this holonomy or monodromy group of uh, these vector bundles because then you, you can define them even if C2 is non equal to zero, uh, like it was done by, say, for example, in characteristic zero by Balaji and Collar at some point. And uh, I believe that this is uh, very much related also to the result of Andreas. <laughs> Uh, Herring and uh, Thomas Paternel, because in the curve case, when you say you have this result that if all the symmetric powers of a vector bundle are stable, then uh, the intersection number of on some proper sub variety is positive. I believe this was essentially done much earlier by in the paper by Biswad, Paramesvalan, and Subramanian. Uh, using computation of this holonomy group. Okay. Anyone else want to comment on this? Uh, okay, thank you, Adrian. Uh, so, uh, let's move on and uh, Oh, that's a question proposed by by Andreas. Uh, I don't know if he wants to comment on it. Um, yes. So this uh, goes back to the uh, to the things which I said uh, two days ago. Um, somehow about uh, you know understanding a bit better the geometry uh, of uh, you know of the situation. So, um, if I have a vector bundle with a first churn class equal to zero, um, which is well, typically you you know you will take a stable vector bundle, um, and it is not pseudo effective or not NEF, then somehow uh, I would like to have a geometric explanation why why is this uh, not pseudo effective or not NEF? Okay, so somehow. Uh, can you explain why there are curves such that if you restrict to them, then the vector bundle becomes uh, as a negative part? Okay, and um, of course, somehow this is uh, this is a very. I mean, this is this is not clear. Even even in very special cases, this is uh, not known. And maybe one way to approach this is to say uh, that you look at the curves which somehow are the most extremal in this in this way and a technical way of formulating this is that um, so you take the tautological class zeta on the projectivization um, by assumption since your vector bundle is not pseudo effective zeta is not pseudo effective and now uh, you take a polarization on x you pull it back and um, you take just as much as necessary to make this sum um, positive, uh, pseudo effective. So this is somehow the, the assumption zeta plus lambda pi star h is pseudo effective. Okay. And now, um, so this sum, in some sense, you're trying to 
single out an extreme array in the in the in the Morricone and try to to see what happens what happens there. What can you say about this ray? And of course, this is somehow when you start doing this construction, you know the the problems have just uh, really you really at this, the start of the, of all the problems that goes on because of course uh, in general you can not be sure that you will have uh, a rational lambda where uh, you had this uh, pseudo effective cone so the, there's the question of uh, rationality and then um, maybe from a geometric point of view uh, something which is uh, uh, in a situation which is especially interesting is that uh, if you're pseudo effective but not NAF, then uh, you will have some curves which are even more special than the curves uh, you were looking for. Can you try to say something about them? So, can you uh, say something about the curves which are which are obstruction to NAFness? Okay. So, for example, K free surface case, we know now we know that there are rational curves on K free surfaces, so certainly they give an obstruction to nafness, um, but uh, do they do they also give the abstraction uh, in 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 this setup? So do we find rational curves which are uh, somehow orthogonal to this extreme array and so on? And so, um, as I said, uh, when we started with Thomas working on this project, I was somehow hoping that uh, from a geometric point of view, one could say much more. Uh, we did not, but we were not able to, to do this and uh, found then another way of, you know, producing something interesting. And uh, since then, things have advanced a bit. So there's this paper by Gonillas and Atem about the case of K3 surfaces, which I, I like a lot. And they so they discuss exactly these kind of questions of rationality of this factor lambda which you have to add, and they construct explicit examples of interesting curves, uh, which are obstructions to pseudo effectiveness, and so I think this is really a good start to to understand something on K three surfaces. Um, let me say that they do not finish all K three surfaces even with pick a number one, and. Uh, even for quartic surfaces in P3, uh, there are some, some natural questions left, okay? So I highly recommend this paper uh, for its geometric insights. And uh, well, I think uh, they raise a lot of interesting questions. And I uh, also continued a bit in this direction together with Fabrizio Anella, um, where we try to find out how much positivity do you have to add to the cotangent bundle of a hyperkähler manifold so that uh, you obtain something which is pseudo effective and so the starting point of our paper was uh, was this kind of geometric question and again um, on the geometric side we did not advance a lot we got better at somehow estimating the lambda but uh, on the geometric side, I really uh, think not, nothing serious, not, nothing is known. And even in examples, uh, I would like to know what happens. Okay. Thank you, Andreas. Anyone want to comment on uh, Andreas' question? Okay. So not let's move on there is uh, this last question which is of course very natural but i don't know if anyone has anything uh, to add to this because uh, it's uh, kind of i think it's kind of surprising that the, the composition theorem for projective manifolds uses so much of uh, algebraic methods right reduction mod p uh, it appears in the splitting of the abelian factors by means of the use of uh, Bosch theorem. Uh, this is the most uh, serious obstruction, I guess, to do anything similar. But I guess that this Bosch theorem is, in the, ca in the singular case, uh, I think at least philosophically, is replacing Shiga-Gromov in the smooth case. 
let's know if any of you uh, has uh, any idea or think that we are going to see a proof, a more analytic proof of this splitting of the abelian factors. And want to comment on that or? Um, maybe I have a comment. Um, even if you take a smooth compact Keller manifold, the the algebraic integrability criterion, you know, Boss, Campana, Pound-Ruel, um, it makes sense to state it. Okay, you have this foliation, and uh, uh, the dual is not pseudo effective. Then you get something like you know compact compact leaves. You know, uh, more or less compact leaves. Um, so it makes sense to, to state this, but even in the smooth case, this is not known. Okay. So uh, already to, to prove this kind of statement on a smooth compact uh, Keller manifold, uh, I think would be a huge step. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. So I was uh, planning to comment about the positive characteristic version of Bobby's decomposition uh because well you can claim that the proof of this is too algebraic for you but for me it is uh, not so algebraic because it doesn't work in positive characteristic obviously and the but uh, uh, the, the composition also fails but in uh, some cases it works pretty well and there are some results about this that started with Mecca and Sublamanian who were doing uh, the very special case where the tangent bundle is trivial and then uh, if the variety is ordinary then uh, it has a finite the cover set that uh, it is an abelian variety and now there are some results proving some weak kind of bovis decomposition in positive characteristic under some assumptions by uh, Patak Falvi and my former student uh, Zdanovic so uh, but and actually this is also quite interesting because many of these results can be somehow rewritten in such a way that they should make sense in positive characteristic. I guess that's all that I want to say right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Adam. Anyone, any further comments? Very good. So, uh, that's all the questions that I have prepared from, from, from the, using the talks of the speakers and the, the, the questions that you send me directly. And now we are in the position to open the floor to questions from the audience or any of you. Let me start just uh, giving the opportunity to Adrian since now we have a connection. Do, do you want to comment? Uh, yesterday, we, yesterday, no, two days ago, Tuesday, we try, you tried to intervene but uh, didn't succeed. Do you remember what was the intervention, Adrian? Uh, maybe now it's too late to go uh, back to this. I don't remember exactly. So, uh, okay. The connection is still not so great. Sorry. Okay, no problem. So any anyone want to make any question or comments or okay. uh, yes I, I would like to um, first to as a, a co-organizer to thank uh, very much uh, the all the all, all the colleagues that have uh, worked for this uh, conference. Uh, unfortunately, we, we will not have the Bouillabès uh, this evening, but uh, they, they did uh, very good work uh, and uh, it, is, uh, it is very nice that uh, our conference become the first uh, virtual conference of, of the CIRM, actually. Uh, I would like also to thank very much uh, George and everyone who uh, organized uh, almost everything. And uh, yes, maybe I, I can uh, ask a, a question to to start uh, about uh, the other direction. So, uh, so you were talking about uh, uh, going to towards uh, the direction of Keller manifolds, but uh, in the algebraic way, can we uh, 
can we expect to have a, a proof uh, which avoid uh, all this trick of a, a dif different a Riemannian geometry by uh, Hidio Gage and Zeriai and uh, the holonomy trick? Can we expect to have, uh, uh, do, or do, do we expect to have a similar uh, uh, decomposition statement, uh, for instance, in field of uh, uh, positive characteristics? Uh, I believe that I only tried to answer this question in positive characteristic. Uh, as I said, there are some methods that can uh, actually prove uh, some results along uh, Bobby's decomposition positive characteristic and actually rewrite some of the results uh, in characteristic zero without using Yao's proof of Calabi's conjecture. So, uh, can you say uh, two words about the, the methods that replace this uh, existence of the special metric? I actually uh, don't remember exactly how it goes. Uh, uh, I must say, uh, so I'm. I didn't prepare for this. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Anyway. Uh, yeah. If, if Adrian can't answer this question, don't think. Uh, <laughs> very good. So, uh, any other question from uh, from the audience? Or from the speakers. And, uh, Actually, that, maybe I can oh. comment a little bit. Uh, I mean, uh, I believe that this goes back to uh, this paper of Mehta and Subramanian in some sense. Where they study uh, obviously Albanese morphism in, in positive characteristic and try to uh, somehow get this uh one fa well say a billion factor looking at the, the albanese morphism and looking at all but but they also need to do lots of things about positivity uh, results in uh so the, the methods in many cases they use a kind of uh, say as fundamental uh, group scheme that uh, was introduced uh Quite a long time ago, and it's similar with studying neftness, but instead of stability in positive characteristics, that's one some of the methods. But okay, thank you again, Adrian. Uh, anyone else want to intervene? Okay, if not, let me thank you all. Thank you, thank all the speakers. Uh, thank you, all the people that come to attend to this conference. I have, I hope that you you had fun, and uh, that's it. So that's the end of the first virtual workshop at CIMP.